The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. This is the United Podcast Network. Four. <laughs> Welcome, friends, to Golf is a Four Letter Word, the show that gives you the inside scoop on the best public courses in New England and other golf hotspots. So, whether you're a worm burner or a total ace, Join us at the 19th hole while we talk all things golf. Now approaching the tee box, your hosts, Craig and Janine Dufton. Hey, good morning, everyone. Good morning, good morning. everyone. Good morning. Mr. Jonathan and Dave. Good yes. Morning. The guys from Two Guys are here with us today, and we are going to talk stogies and bogies. Chrissy's here with us, too, another cigar Hi, aficionado. Everyone. Say hello, everybody. Why don't you guys tell us about yourselves really quick, and we'll get into cigar talk. Age before beauty. Age before beauty. (laughs) All right. I'm David Garofalo. I own Two Guys Smoke Shop. We specialize in premium cigars, and premium cigars go perfect with a round of golf, and that's what we're going to talk about today. And I'm Mr. Jonathan. I got uh, about 10 years' experience in cigar retail, as well as 12 years' experience on a cigar podcast, which David forgot to mention. It's Ah. called The Cigar Authority. Uh, check us out every Saturday from noon to two live on YouTube or Facebook Live or uh, on any podcast catcher the same way you're catching this podcast right now. Yes. Thank I'm going to start looking at that now that you said that. So thank you. Yes, they're always, right. they're always they're always good. We are, we, are, we are in the midst of pod, we are in the midst <laughs> of sure the guys awesome. who do the the cigar podcast, the Cigar Authority from 12 to 2 on Saturdays. It's, you can come down here to this studio right here. We're Studio 21 Podcast Cafe where we are right now on the EXP Realty soundstage, mm-hmm. and we are going to talk cigars. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say, you know, there's a lot of golfers, obviously, that, that smoke cigars. After my round every, every week in my league, I, I enjoy a cigar with my buddies on the, on the porch at Hickory Hill. That's your favorite and time, And I thought actually. it was, yeah, it, it's my favorite time. It's relaxing for me. After, after golf. After, Bonding, too. Well, I do it after, your... and then I smoke during. During, okay. You know, yeah, if I'm playing 18 holes, I'll smoke. But if I'm only playing nine, I'll just either walk, and then at the end of it, I'll have a cigar while I'm sitting there. Okay. So so I see you, you're already smoking the cigar. Jonathan lit up. I didn't know if I was supposed to, so I didn't. But I have with me uh, something that every golfer should have in their golf bag. Uh, this particular cigar is an old, uh, old brand, 200 years old, called Toscano. Remember Toscano, the old Italian stogies that yes, Clint absolutely. Eastwood smoked? And the reason why is they don't need humidification, and premium cigars do. They have to be kept perfect. But, huh. these, but these don't. So you can throw them in your bag, forget about them for the whole year. Next time, they're always in there. And then w- when you feel like, oh, my God, I wish I had a cigar. It's the perfect time. Nice. These are in there. So they're perfect. Awesome. Toscano. And they're the right size, too, because, you know, you're, you're big, the bigger, the bigger, sto- really the awesome. bigger cigars – you're, you got to find some place to put them. If you're in your cart, you know what I mean? Like in, with these, you can kind of just put them down on the ground lightly and you get it back up. You don't yeah. have to really worry about... Yeah, relight, you know. relight, it's okay. Yeah. So, Janine, you're not smoking a cigar. Have you ever? Uh, is it twice now? Yep. This will be her to, third, this will be her third one. <laughs> well, don't inhale it, but take one if you don't like yeah, it and yeah. put it down. But give that cigar a smell. That is wow. a Toscano Macchiato... Um, Smell that. So My grandfather used to chew on them. And, and a lot of people do. So, so this was one of my questions, though, for you, Dave and, and Mr. Jonathan, right? Hey, okay, Papa. What, what does, you know, when you're looking at a cigar, what does a good cigar versus what, like you said, a non, uh, someone who didn't take care of their cigar look like? What do, you, what do you see, like, right away that tells you that this cigar is no good or this cigar is good? Typically, you want to look at a cigar and look at the outside wrapper and see that it doesn't have a lot of waves to it. If it has waves, that means at some point in its life, it was dehydrated slightly and then it was rehydrated and the wrapper just doesn't come back. It'll still smoke okay yep. if you can get it to between 60, 55 and 65% humidity uh, and under 70 degrees is ideal for long-term storage. Okay. Okay, so, so Janine, give this a taste. Just put it in your mouth. You don't have to light it. You just put it in your mouth. I shouldn't have put my lipstick on. Mm-hmm. So, so this was another question that I it. had. It really? it I like see your... this happen all the time, Dave. Yeah. People smoke their cigar without even lighting it. They taste it, and they draw. Yeah. They, what's I that called? Like drawing? It cold cold draw. draw. Okay, cold draw. A, see, we're going to learn some good terms today. This is tastier today. from what I smoked with then you the other day. Yeah, so, oh, right. I'm, <laughs> I'm imagining, and, and I, I don't play golf a lot, but when I play, it's probably once, maybe twice a year. 
my favorite thing about being out on the golf course is being out in nature, and, and I don't let anything go by me when I'm out there. I'm sure. not just looking That's to exactly hit how I am. three strokes to get to the hole. I'm looking at the trees and how nice the grass is, and I'm just trying to use this as an experience to relax. And this is what cigars are as well as a culture. It's just a way to be able to kick back and relax. And when you can combine the two, yep. to me, there really is nothing better. Smoking cigars in nature, and you have something to do other than just puffing. Yep. Now you can chase this little silly white ball well, Mark, around. Mark, <laughs> yep, Mark Twain, yeah. a big big cigar smoker. A long, sure. long time. 22, light, 22 a day on average. Yeah, yeah. he... he Called golf a good walk spoiled. Yeah. That was his famous. Yeah. That Best was his way to famous spoil quote. a good walk. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Good. All right, I got to light up. As Before they said the on Caddyshack, over. biggest waste of real estate, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a, is it a love-hate thing? I, I'm not a golfer, but I did go golfing. I went to the golf course twice this week. Nice. Uh, two different golf courses because there was um, a golf tournament. Uh, tournament. Uh, two different golf tournaments, one in New Hampshire for the Cigar Association of New Hampshire cool. and one in New York for the New York Tobacconist Association. They had me as a, as a guest a speaker at it uh, after it was over, yeah. and um, I got to spend hours and hours outdoors, which it, it was beautiful. I Absolutely. Mean, both places were great. That's nice. Um, and I can see the relaxation of the thing, but it's a long day. Sure. It is, but no, well, especially no phone. especially in those tournaments. I mean, a typical a typical golf round, you know, like yesterday, I played in an hour and forty five minutes for nine holes, so three and a half hours, you know, and you don't have to play eighteen holes. You go play nine holes all the time, just if sure. you you know got something so, to do. So they, it did go over four hours yeah. for each one. Sure. Was so, it a scramble format? Everybody hits, and yeah, then they play the same. Yeah, best yeah. ball. Yeah. Yep. And so. I would imagine that would be faster because somebody hits the ball good and then somebody hits it lousy. The guy who hits it lousy picks it up, goes over to the guy that puts it good, and then goes from there, and this thing is going to be faster. But it was like the longest game of baseball to me. Yeah, well, because in a lot of those tournaments, you have people that have never played golf before, and and that's fine. That's that's why the format is the way it is, and people should expect, you know, a five-hour, six-hour day plus food and... You know, yeah. libations. Absolutely. Yeah. But, I mean, yeah, it's you a know, full day. We do that on our show. We foc- we've been focusing on like every couple of weeks, we talk about a charity golf tournament and stuff like that just to promote that okay. around here because it's so commonplace. It's such a great and easy way to raise money. Sure. Yes. You know, yes. and cigars are a big part of that too, you know. Boy, they, 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 they put a, a cigar in every hole. Yep. And, I mean, it was an unbelievable deal to them. I don't know if you ever went Rexford, New York, nope. the Edison Club. Beautiful. Nice. This, and that's we'll the thing to. about, hmm. you know, when Definitely. it comes to cigar places, there's only so many places you can go to enjoy a cigar. Yep. Golf courses. My God, there's no end to this. Right. Yeah. They're, they're so big and so elaborate and everything that goes on, but there's, there's actually so many of them that I talk to people that are, are big golfers, and I mentioned the Edison Club, which it was so beautiful. Is and it they private? Say, I, I believe know. it is private. Oh, yeah. really? It, it sounds private. like it. Yeah. And the other one we did in New Hampshire was Amherst Country Club, mm. which I know was not private. Um, and we've been doing very it nice golf track. Yeah, yep, nice golf track there. Yeah, beautiful. So very you had good. mentioned putting your uh, cigar in the ground, which is a big no-no. Yes. Uh, so not only is the ground itself higher in moisture content than what you would want for your cigar, so you're going to have half the cigar absorbing moisture off the ground, and the other half drying out in the sun. You're going to give guarantee yourself a bad burn. So what you should have is a golf clip like what I have here. Which is what I'm going to have shortly after the show. So (laughs) the number one mistake the number one mistake people make with these golf clips is they clip them to the golf cart. Yep. Now the time that you're gonna be holding the cigar is when you're in the golf cart. Why don't you give me a little shot look at that there, Mr. Jonathan? So the time that you're not holding your cigar is when you're swinging. So really the place to put this clip is on your golf bag. You clip it right to the top of the bag. And then the little clip on the side holds your cigar. It nice. holds the cigar. It's got a nice little divot. And this is a big ring gauge cigar, and it holds it no problem. I can wow, go all the way up another 10 ring gauge out to 70 ring gauge, and it'll have no problem holding on to that. Beautiful. And for those of us golfers who have no idea what you just said about a ring gauge, we're That's talking awesome. about the so thickness of the cigar. How thick it is, yeah. So a, a ring gauge is 1 64th of one inch okay. with, with respect to the diameter like of the cigar. Like a tree, like you're almost like tree rings. You're Correct. Yes. About, right? I have a question. Yes. Okay. Proper way... To light a cigar, I see you burning it a little bit. Is there yeah, so what you wanna, steps I should take for in, the in this <laughs> in this cigar? The there is no 
real wrapper, the outside leaf on this is technically a binder. So what you're gonna do is seal that binder to the filler tobacco that's underneath. So I'm just gonna quickly give it a little toast, they call it, and just mostly pay attention to the top part of the cigar as I roll it. That so it's not really burning. lighting the, top, the bottom, right? The, Middle and up. Correct, the and top then edge. It. And then you're gonna take a puff oh, on that, okay. and I'm gonna hit you. And don't inhale, Janine. Yeah. There you go. We just take it into our mouth that, and then push it out. And after you blow it out, it, it's like wine drinkers, that wine tasters, they actually spit the wine out and then taste. And then after yep. the, the wine is out of your mouth, then you're tasting. Now the smoke is out of your mouth, and now you're tasting. Yep. Now why don't you explain to us something I've heard called retrohaling. What is, what is retrohaling? So re retrohaling is a forced pushing of the smoke from your mouth out through your nasal cavity, which is not an ideal way to taste the smoke or taste the tobacco because in most people's cases, they weren't cigarette smokers, and you have a lot of cilia back there that are are very sensitive. Okay. So burn, what happens right? when you take a puff on a cigar is you're going to rely on the same retro nasal activity that you have when you eat food. Right. So you take a puff, you blow the smoke out, and you can just chew with your mouth closed, and you'll push a little bit of the aroma that's on your palate back and forth through your nasal cavity, and that'll give you additional flavors hmm. without having the burn. Wow. He that also says it because I've never seen him successfully do slow. it on the Cigar Authority. Yeah, we don't do it well. <laughs> you want to do it, draw it slow. But, but you can, right? Yeah, you take yeah. a sp slow without, puff. Without inhaling, can you blow it through your nose? If, do, oh. No? Okay. Like, don't make her do it. I'm not going to try. <laughs> no. I don't think so. Now, so something how about, else, how about on my the, instinct uh, explain is Explain the band. Right. Though, like I won't when, say why. When do you take the band off <laughs> and when don't you take the band off or do you never take the band off? If a cigar comes to you when you make a purchase and the cigar has cellophane on it. Yep. They're going to use a little bit of the fruit pectin that they use to seal the cap. There's, there's only, cigars have three ingredients, tobacco, water, and a little bit of that fruit pectin is just to seal the cap. Okay. Now, when they put the cigar in cellophane, I don't know if you've ever taken the cigar out of the cellophane and tried to slide it back in. It's very difficult. Right. Because so, it, it poofs right away? The, the cellophane catches on the band, for me okay. anyway. Yep. So what they'll do is they'll put a little bit of that fruit pectin on the back of the band and seal the band to the wrapper. So really, the time to take it off is after that glue has heated up a bit. And most people will use the expression kissing the band. When that uh, combustion line on your cigar gets up close to kissing the band, you'll have hit enough heat on that sure. to be able to release it. Otherwise, you're when you go to peel this off, you're going to capture that wrapper, tear it, and now you're going to have a flute, and you're going to be holding it with Which your finger. Which I have done. Yeah. So thank you for sharing that I blew with it me. out of my nose. I'm, okay. Ready? 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 <laughs> ready, ready, like, ready? like a circus ready trick. Yeah. Oh, wow. nice. Wow. wow. With ease. She's Actually, a trained yeah. professional. For the first time, you've achieved something that I've not seen these yeah. aficionados. You guys see, you never smoked. Do you want me to do it again? Never smoked, <laughs> never smoked a cigarette in her life. You know, like, never have I ever, but like that kind of stuff. Like, I've never had a McDonald's hamburger there or something like that. Yeah. 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 I never had a cigarette. So, if I, so no. now I know how to smoke a cigar? Yes, you're yeah. a professional. Oh God, you're getting I'm there. Psyched. But if I can impart, what about? Let's talk about while we're talking about stuff yes. you should be doing. Hold on to that. Golf thought. wise, etiquette wise, what about the ash? I hear people talk about the ash. You you let it fall. You don't rub it off. You don't want to expose the cherry. These things. Explain all that stuff to our our peeps. So out there. tobacco combusts at roughly 800 degrees Fahrenheit. What time is it? Okay. <laughs> so you, the longer you can keep that ash on, the more insulation you're going to have holding that cherry closer to the 800 degrees. Okay. When you take the puff, that jumps all the way up to 1,200, and Is then it starts hot? to drop. So when you're taking your puff, you want to keep that ash on. If you're playing golf, honestly, you can leave it on as long as you want. It'll fall off when it's ready to fall off. Yep. You don't want to just constantly flick it, because if you expose that cherry, as soon as you expose it, the heat starts to dissipate, and you start to lose it. And when you drop down to 500 degrees, now you start getting a char taste. So you want to try to keep that ember burning through there. You don't want to puff it 37 times a minute, but yep. about every 45 seconds, you should be realistically taking a puff. Okay. If your cigar ever goes out on you, you wipe the ash off as best you can. Uh, something that works well for that is a 60-degree uh, a wedge. You just take that little right. knife edge. Because yeah. yeah. <laughs> it certainly doesn't work well for anything else on the golf course. That's all I can I don't even know what that is. But okay, it sounded good. So it, when you go to uh, relight, you're going to take, and I know some people are listening, so I'm just going to do my best to describe this. I'm going to take my lighter and heat up 
what's left of the ash particulates on the end of the cigar, because my cigar has gone out on me because I talk too much. So I'm going to roll the cigar exactly like I did for Janine's when I was lighting it, keeping the flame above the 50-yard line on the cigar's body. And rolling the cigar around. And I'm yeah, rolling it around that, now. Yeah. Once I'm ready to light, instead of pulling in, because if I pull in, I'm going to draw all that ash at the end of that cigar into the chamber. So if I take this and I blow over the flame. Out. He's blowing out of it. And the start cigar will light up just like it did before. And it's now it tastes cleaner. It cleaner. tastes cleaner than when I was smoking it's it before. It's almost like you, uh, hmm. like you got you got stuff on your engine, and you yeah, just kind of reverse it, and you yeah, back yeah, it out. Yeah. And you, <laughs> right. you said the smoke. Your, prop, your prop's got some weeds on it, and you're kind of blowing it off, and then you're pulling yeah. it back. It's not as bad for you as cigarettes. It's better, it's right. better for you than not smoking. Right. Uh, That's a good thing to talk about because I don't. Yeah, it's a smoking mis- huge one misconception to misconception with that. It absolutely is. So one smoking one to two cigars a day will actually extend your life a little bit than if you didn't smoke at all. Really, having one glass of wine a day yep. will actually extend your life than if you didn't drink at all. Having a dog is going to extend your life. Being married, and I guess it depends who you married yeah, to. Yeah, that's BS. But that's yeah. BS. It's going to extend yeah. your life. Being alone. That's I feel a whole like other podcast, debatable. Dave. <laughs> I want everybody to understand that a premium cigar is not a cigarette. It is not vape. It is not chewing tobacco. It is not pipe tobacco. It is a premium cigar. And we're lumped in with those other products. And that's the reason why you sell none of those other Correct. products here at all. Correct. You sell cigars here. And, and it's cigar just something to... What it does is actually make you relax. I, I was going to ask, like, do I feel a little? It 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 absolutely mm, does. Feeling, I yeah. feel like I don't know if Shoulders it's a little drop. dizzy or like I'm like, all right, I feel okay. <laughs> so that's wa- real that I felt that. I've been yep. watching people for 36 years smoking cigars in our lounge. They come in a certain way and they leave a diff- certain way. Yeah. It the, the metamorphosis happens in about 10 minutes. They light the cigar, and then all of a sudden the shoulders start dropping. The whole, the body changes, everything. The attitude changes, all of I it. I just totally did that. <laughs> yeah, totally. in golf I just too. Said, if you I'm, have a bad shot, I'm yeah. so I think I, yes. I find it very relaxing though to, to smoke a cigar while I'm playing eighteen Here we holes. Go. Absolutely. Like you said, from like you. you said, Jonathan, the <laughs> you know you're out there, you see a hawk, you see a rabbit, you see even a freaking yeah, stupid groundhog, that. man. They're, they're the silliest months. things. If you've ever seen a mother groundhog with like three little baby groundhogs, it's the funniest thing you've ever seen in your life. What they're about just, the like, alligators? Lumps, like yeah. just lumps that go. And they just warble everywhere they go. It's hilarious. What so, about the alligator that was 10 feet Yeah, away alligators are always fun. <laughs> hey, we're, we're going to take a break. Long. And we're going to hear from uh, Elk. See, I did it right this week, Chrissy. I did. Good elk, job. The Elk Mortgage Team. They're, gonna, they're a great sponsor of our podcast. And we'll be back with uh, Mr. Jonathan and Dave from Two Guys. May the mortgage gods smile upon us. I love thee, Michael of North Suburbia. And I thee. <clears throat> I guess you guys are worried about competitive bids. Don't be. Our fairway advantage pre-approval is so powerful, you can even compete against cash. So we will triumph. <laughs> did say we'd get you home. We are forever indebted to you, my lord. Honey, you're being weird. So get started with Elk Mortgage Team today. Call Josh Frias on 603-714-2438 or visit elkmortgageteam.com. Hey. Yep. Chrissy does have a great voice. Mm-hmm. Good voiceovers. What are you talking about? That was an American woman. Yeah. That's, yeah. <laughs> American No idea what you guys are talking that about. That was Christine from, uh, was that was Christine from Cleveland, Ohio. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so I have a good burn, don't I? Yes. Uh, got a good burn going there. Well, and that's the thing about l- doing a good job of lighting your cigar. If you light it properly, mm-hmm. much like any approach, you, you know, you're going to use your, so you're your doing favorite the driver. Mm-hmm. You're not going to just walk up to the ball and smack it. You're going to walk up and you're going to address the ball. Hello, Hello ball. ball. Hello, <laughs> ball. Okay. Hey, do we have wait, any good? Wait, do we have any we good? Go. <laughs> we leave these guys at the pros. Okay. <laughs> So we're out here on, this is the, our back nine now, the back nine of segment of our show. Brought and to you by. Brought to you by, who do you got? Scott's, Scott's Roofing. Scott's Roofing. Oh, God, the guys at Scott's Roofing. Yeah, yeah. Sean Darby, our friends over at, at uh, Scott's Roofing in Derry. And uh, give them a people. call. They are awesome. They're not in the roofing business. They're in the service business. So yeah, we give go. those and guys a call over at, uh, what do we get? 603-505-4455. 4455. Love it. And they treat you like family. Yes, they do. They do. They're awesome over there. Thank you. So, so they're so going to yell at me and smack me in the back. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. how you Maybe. Often. Depends how your family Depends is. Depends on the we, talk, we, we were talking about that Depends last week. Depends if had a liquid lunch. No. You know, when you, can you just imagine like the four of us or the Americas got talent? 
judges, right? And you're like, <laughs> we're searching for America's normal family. And you're like, you know, people just keep coming out on stage like, all right, tell us your story. Like, no, no. <laughs> like, my, 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 my father was it. No, yeah. no, yeah. keep going. Like, it, it, you would, when would Beaver, you be able to yes. ever find it? It would be the best game show ever. We're yeah. looking for you someone who is just absolutely so. normal. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. That's our exist. idea. Sorry, no was I getting loud there? You got to keep those ideas in your head. So yeah. something else that uh, all right, golfers need is a hard oh. case. So ah. this particular one holds five cigars. And as part of a promotion that we run here at twoguyscigars.com, also Two Guys Smoke Shop, this particular one for $5 more than the regular case. A regular hard case will run you about $25. For $30, you get a $10 cutter and a $15 jet lighter. And the reason why I'm emphasizing the word jet is when you're playing golf outside, good luck trying to light a 60 ring gauge hot cakes like what I'm smoking here with a match or two matches or three matches. I agree. You, the only shot you have of keeping that match lit is while the sulfur's burning. So now you're going to strike it and you're going to pull sulfur into your cigar. It, it's a terrible experience. You need a jet flame lighters to be able to just... It's bad enough you're golfing. You know what I mean? Like you get the aggravation of golfing. You don't want the aggravation of... So you need, you need the proper equipment. But you equipment. don't want to burn and your face off. So you how many times? We just talked about it last week on our last week's podcast show. We talked about what the essentials that you need in your golf bag. Uh, what and you everybody need is needs the, it. Yeah. And what you need is the perfect thing. So if somebody comes in to buy the cigars. Oh, you pick up the cigars. I'll meet you at the golf course. This foursome. And the guy comes in and has his little note. He says, Monte Cristo number two, I need four of these. Because he heard of what that cigar is. And I said, oh, what are you doing? Four cigars, Monte Cristo number two. This guy's going golfing. This is what I know. Yeah, guaranteed. So uh, uh, he comes and gets the four cigars. I said, why Monte Cristo number two? That's what the guy told me to get. Okay, instead of trying to change his mind and give him a better cigar at a lesser price or anything like that, okay, this is what he ends up wanting. Okay, now you're going to need a cutter and a jet flame lighter. Oh, maybe I think the guy might have it, blah, blah, blah. This is what you're going to need, because if you get there, Monte Cristo number two is a torpedo. Right. has a point. You can't peel the top. You can't bite the end of it. You're screwed. And that's what they will do, probably. Yes. And their experience is ruined. The right. scars and are you unravel. And, and some people say, oh, I use the golf tee, and they jam the golf tee, uh, and now you split the head because you just put more material, and you jammed yeah. and took and away airway. one of the air right. right. You and I airways. talked about that a couple of weeks ago, about different, yeah, the different types airway. of cutters. And yes. you, you guys go with the simple blade cutter, right? This and that's what you need for a torpedo, yeah. Yeah. and it's the way to end up going anyway. Yeah. Uh, and you need to be able to light that cigar instead of four guys huddled around one match with the wind blowing, and it doesn't work. This is what you need. So, you know, you talk about trying to do customer service for someone. It seems like I'm trying to sell the guy something maybe he doesn't want, but his experience is going to be terrible if he doesn't have the tools. Right. If you show up at the golf course and you don't have the right clubs, you, your experience is going to be terrible yep. also. So these are the tools. I, and I do. I keep a couple of my Adabies in there and my cutter and my thing. And Adabie. Then, beautiful. Yeah, hey, I, he kind of said it right. I did. I said it right, right? Out of bay. Out of bay. Sorry, I didn't say it right. It's the accent. The first we'll time I you. said out of bay, I apologize. E-L-K. It's all Ad- good. E-L-K. I love them. Where's I don't know said? why I fell in love with them. Oh, we I both just, said L. Well, the whole thing about what makes <laughs> out of bay different Adabay. than why. other cigars is if, if you walk around the shop, the average age on the tobacco in most cigars is about three years of age before they make a cigar out of that tobacco. Atabe puts five years of age on their tobacco, and then the average cigar is rolled and rested for 90 days, boxed and shipped. Atabe is rested for two to four years, depending on the size. Bigger size is longer, smaller size is shorter. So what happens when you age tobacco and what happens when you age cigars is photosynthesis happens in the leaf when it's green, and you end up having a byproduct of ammonia sitting in the leaf. The longer you sweat that ammonia out, the smoother the tobacco gets. When you roll the cigar, because the roller is going to, most of them use a, what's an accordion style, so they fold the tobacco back and forth, back and forth, you break the capillaries in that leaf, and now you release even more ammonia. So if you don't rest mm. that cigar for at least 90 days, you get a fresh rolled cigar at the beach on some resort in Barbados, and the guy says, oh, I just rolled this cigar today, you can smoke it today, maybe tomorrow, but by the third day, because those capillaries broke, that ammonia is releasing... And the cigar becomes sick, we call it, and it's going to be sick for 90 days. Well, so the reason why you like that cigar right there, Craig, is it's 
a, so much age on the tobacco. Nine years by the time we get it. Right. Uh, I was just going to say it's this super, is a nine. It takes smooth. nine years to make yeah. this cigar. It yeah. was tobacco. In certain regions of the country, we have tobacco is better. Yeah. And yeah. The, well, different. Yeah. Different. Much like different. wine. Yeah. Yep. You know, California wine versus Spanish wine mm -hmm. versus wine from Chile. Yeah. You know, you're going to have different flavor profiles that happen. Awesome. Wine, liquor. Yeah, because of the, um, the ingredients. Coffee. Interesting. The yeah. soil. You know, all I figured it was places. the same, but no, I just wanted to hear you guys talk about product. it. Yeah, agricultural product. Yeah, the soil product. and the... Yeah. Sure. I like so that it's not bad. What, what, else, what else do you see? What other typical types of cigars do you see that people coming in that you know is they're, they're golf. Obviously, you can tell a golfer when they're coming in. I mean, yeah. it's pretty it's pretty obvious when we come in. We've got our golf shirts on, our Titleist hat or whatever. So something that I would say that somebody that smokes cigars or is concerned or is interested in smoking cigars is, for starters, consider the weather. If you're going to have a 96-degree day and you're still a psychopath and you have to go out and you have to get around in, yeah. you want to go with a milder cigar than what you normally would smoke because the heat is just going to beat the snot out of you. So go with something like a Lagiana or a Hammer and Sickle or the Atabay that you're smoking, something that's a little milder. If you're going out and you're going to play in 65 degrees, the sky's the limit. You smoke anything you want. Sure. Uh, and I encourage people that are uh, smoking only on the golf course, you should light up every once in a while when you're not on the golf course, and you should push the envelope as far as what you're smoking. If you always smoke a Connecticut Shade cigar, try uh, something that's a little darker, maybe a Sun Grown or a Maduro, to see if maybe there's something else going on on your palate that you like. What's the, what's the best way for someone who is interested in learning further? I know that you guys have classes here. You have intro stuff for, for beginners. We just had a, a simple one here. But you know, where does someone go to become more of an, an aficionado? So, well, you know, I know a lot of people tell me they come in and say, you know, I, I Googled it and I YouTubed it. And there's some maniacs out there, man. Some of the information on Google and, and YouTube is completely the opposite of, of what it is. Uh, you know, uh, doctors say it all the time that, you know, don't confuse my uh, 30 years of being a doctor and 16 years of going to college with um, a Your Google, Google search. search on WebMD. Right. Yeah. Um, same thing. So I would say go to a tobacconist. Go to somebody experienced. And don't be afraid to ask. And sometimes I see it. Yeah. They, they come in and they hate to ask the question and stuff. That's the worst thing you can do is not right. ask the question. Ask the stupid question and then figure out um, where you want to go. Hopefully, they're going to be helpful to you and do that. And then the next time you come because in. Because they have all sorts of options. They have price, oh. You have price range. You have. We have 1,100 have choices right. of single cigars in this store ourselves, and we don't carry half of it. So once we, you've had a cigar and you say, I like this or I didn't like that, we move into the next thing yeah. and we keep going. And I've been smoking cigars for 40 years. I've done that with you I'm guys. I'm still like not this. done. I've done it with a couple of times. I've had a cigar somewhere else and I've said, you know, what's similar to this? And you guys are giving yes. me that. And, and, uh, and that's where I kinda, should I've know. on my way here. And I, I mean, I know it's a more premium cigar, but... Well, and that's I, I the don't other... smoke as many cigars as you guys do every week. Every week you know, so but you should I be like... smoking better, yeah. which you are. Yeah. And, and that's the thing that people should consider mm, yeah. is if you don't smoke all that often or if you don't drink all that often, buy a $150 bottle of wine. Right. Yeah, you're, you're going to have one drink a year? Right. Yeah. Go for it. Yeah. You're going to have I, one or two cigars you a year? Eat meat once Get, a year or something yeah. if like, you're yeah. not into eating meat? Yeah. You're going to eat a hot dog? Yeah. Go, oh, go no. Kobe <laughs> Filet. Yeah. Yeah. What, exactly. what else? Yeah. Any other essentials that the golfers need? I mean, that seems like it's it right there, right? You need like, your lighter. You need your cutter. You yeah. need a hard case so the cigars aren't getting beat up. Yeah. And a, a hard case That's nice. that nice. holds at least five cigars because let's say you're in a foursome yeah. and you're supplying everybody a cigar and then a guy walks by and is like, oh my God. I didn't bring a cigar. You have a fifth cigar, yep. or you have one for the nineteenth hole. Beautiful. Yeah. I think we've awesome. learned so much today. We have learned a ton, I, and uh, now we're gonna have am some I fun. Am I a good cigar though. smoker? You're a cigar okay. smoker right yeah. now. You're doing good. You're doing all right, Jen. Yeah. That's there, the gateway little, one right I'm there. I'm going to be buying some yeah. of those on you my way out. I'm going to leave you the rest of the pack. How's Aww, that? Thank you. Okay. All right. These come in different flavors? Yeah. All right. Yep. All right. We'll be checking Look at that you. out you're on You're like, I'm going to get you a hat, like Clint Eastwood. Here we go. This is the exact cigar we had. I'm going to be golfing and smoking cigars. Should we have a little Excuse bit of fun me. with these guys before we have to? Yeah, we sign do a off? we do a segment on our show called Pressure Putts, All right. and it's basically there's ten questions that you guys don't have the answers to, and if you don't know the answers, we're just gonna 
move on to the next question. But can we, can we help each I mean, other? You I can, can. You can help each other. It's not going to be that difficult, except maybe the last question. What do we right? win well, if we get them all right? You, do do you, we win one of these great? You win one of these great. Coffee yes, cups? absolutely. Oh my God, my God I forgot. I forgot to yeah. these. Yeah. <laughs> this was a great gift. <laughs> Wonderful gift from for our, us. Very our friends at Studio Twenty One Podcast it. Cafe, Dave and Chrissy, and all the people here. Awesome. Yes, it's a great very, place to do a podcast. Thoughtful. Obviously, we've been. I've been. This is my second podcast yes, here. Thank you. And uh, hopefully, it's my last podcast here. And we can just keep this going. They asked for me a to long, work today. I'm like, time. I can't. I have quite a few appointments today. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Are All right, you so guys? Are ready? you guys ready for one. this? You guys ready for this pressure? Pods? It's time for pressure pods. The segment where we tee up ten rapid fire questions and see if our guests can make pod. Pressure Pods brought to you by United Compressor and Pump, the experts in industrial compressor and pump installation, maintenance, repairs, and sales. They deliver competent, quick, and incomparable compressor and pump service for commercial and industrial customers in New England. Call United Compressor and Pump today on 603-552-5885. And now, here's today's Pressure Pod. All right, here we go. Number one, tell us your favorite golfer. I'm going to have to say that it's absolutely Tiger Woods. I'm sure it's a canned response, but he's my favorite. I've been following him since high school. All right. Same. Yeah. Okay. Favorite cigar? Uh, are we talking favorite cigars. cigar for uh, every I'll, day? I'll let you give me two. How's that? All right. I smoke one cigar that I, that I like every single day. That's the Aladino Corojo Reserve. But if I'm looking to celebrate or I'm going to – I just got my hole in one, I'm smoking Byron Grand Poema. Every time. Okay. And you're smoking mine, the Atabay. Oh, you're my uh, favorite right. of every cigar I've ever had, oh, well, and I've I, had a lot of them. And he I, likes the Mystico size. He, well, he doesn't say that very often, but he likes the Mystico size. This size, the one I have? I don't what know what size that? I have. That is the Delirios, I believe, yeah. or the Brujos. Yeah, yeah a little Brujos. Brujos. Bigger. Bigger. Yeah, Brujos. Just a little bigger. Yeah. I like it because it's good on the golf course. Yeah. But um, what, who is the most famous person you have smoked a cigar with? Armando Sante. Nice. Nice, wow. Dave. You've got a, you've got a few. So, Red Owl back was a customer uh, right. for years, and he was very very famous cigar smoker. Uh, Winston <laughs> Churchill's grandson, mm. uh, Winston awesome. Churchill had had Randolph with, Churchill. Randolph, Randolph Churchill. Churchill. Uh, All right, that's uh, that one for me. That's an awesome. Yeah, one. I love that. That's exciting. All right, what's your favorite beverage while having cigar? Uh, coffee for yeah, me. Yeah, black coffee or black tea. And that's because it's a palate cleansing of it or just the fact that you like it? Uh, it, it does. It, it gives you a very clean palate. And it, if you're sp- drinking the same thing every single time when you smoke cigars, now you have a way to evaluate your cigar from cigar to cigar. Nice. If you switch your yeah. beverage up all the time, you really have no baseline. Hey, kudos to me for knowing that one, though, huh. for palate cleansing. Well done. Yeah. It was very right, good. Thank you. Thank Teach you very much. Moment. All right. Here's They're both our, alkaloids. Is the here's other. our most famous question, Chrissy. Ready? Boxers or briefs? <laughs> So high class here. Briefs for me. I'm a, uh, this is the disturbing answer. You're not going to like what you're going to like here. You may get a visual. Are you going to say commando? I'm more, yeah. of a, I'm more of a bikini brief kind of guy. All right. I love yeah. it. Oh, I thought you were going with Don Natural. No, no, no. no. <laughs> Thank God for that. Today. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways. There is both layers between Question us. Question number six. Here it is. Most expensive cigar you have smoked? $106. $300. Three hundred dollars. Three hundred. Now, what was the name of that one? It was called Trinidad. It was in non-existent in the United States. It was a Cuban cigar, and it could only be given to diplomats by by Fidel Castro. And I was searching for it, searching, and a buddy of mine uh, w- was in Texas, and he said, "I got a guy here that has a box of them. Uh, got them from Whoopi, Whoopi Goldberg of all people. That's how she got. <laughs> that's how they where they had come from." And said, "They're three hundred dollars a piece." I said, "I'll take two. So the guy said, you sure? And I said, yeah, please pay for it and bring me back too. And he came back and brought me back too. And he said, okay, what are you going to do? And I said, this one's for you and this one's for me. And we sat down right then and there and smoked it. And how and was it? It was <laughs> a great $20 cigar, oh. but it was 300 each. <laughs> Ow. Okay. And it had a unique great. taste of tea. It tasted like um, oh. tea, English tea. Huh. All right, number seven. If you could pick anyone at any time in history to smoke a cigar with, who would it be? Uh, I would uh, probably have to pick my grandfather for that one. Oh, but he's I dead. That. I love that. He said I could pick anyone. Anyone. Anyone, anyone at why any time Why are you going to try to yuck my yum? That got dark. Celebrity, <laughs> anyone. Yeah, that's what I mean. They could be dead. <laughs> my be grand- anyone in history. Jonathan, you my have. grandfather's dead, you too. pick your dad in one second. Yeah, if I could if I could go back. And my dad used to back come up time. every Sunday, and I used to have a cigar with him on Sundays. I like and, and he passed but away, and dead. I miss it. 
<laughs> yep. All right. Oh, well, sorry. I thought right. you just let, you let's did give, that to let him. Give me, let me, let's do that question again. 7A. All right. Yeah. Aside from uh, anyone in your family who I know you would all bring back. Yeah. All right. Who would, what celebrity, what, or in historical figure would you smoke a cigar with? I would like Winston Churchill himself. Yeah. I've sat down with a lot of business people, people I have no right to have ever sat down with to begin with. And cigars have brought me there because I'm kind of like a, a guru of That's cigars. That's a show itself You are an right ambassador there. of cigars, and, absolutely. And having the opportunity to sit with these mega business people that you know, I can learn from and sit and have a cigar with. It's been unbelievable. Awesome. The people I've met, you know, I'm, I'm not that big into the celebrity type thing. I have a lot of athletes yeah. and things like that. But, you know, so, somebody that made a fortune with their brain and, and figuring it out is really somebody to learn from. And nice. It's a lot of great people. Jonathan, I, think I, would, I think I would pick Shaquille O'Neal oh. for the same reason that David is saying, not because he's a famous basketball player, but this dude was on Google at the very beginning uh, he's made more money outside of basketball than he ever made in basketball, He's and I'd want to be able to sit there and pick his brain. I love it. That's well, awesome. My, mine would be Ulysses S. Grant. Oh, my. I would but he's dead. Guy. He's dead. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I know where he's buried. Yes. <laughs> my my, right. my grandfather. Tomb. Yep. Janine's would yes. be here. Yeah. Yeah. Number eight. Most right. cigars you have smoked at one time. Oh, God. These guys. <laughs> Probably 50. Ooh. 50 in a day. I do trade I shows say, and things like that. I was going to say, what period of time? And day, right? when I was in Cuba, and I've been there five times a week apiece, I've smoked at least 10 cigars per day every single day that I was down there because I was just trying to so with my own shit together. And you don't feel Jonathan, different physically? Can you beat 50? Maybe a beat I, I can't, I, I've, done, I've done 50 yeah. in a day. That's that's not a for what we do. I mean, we we literally say that we smoke a lot of S so that the, our customers don't have to. I mean, we, yeah. we smoke a lot. Yeah. Crappy uh, cigars. Too. But at, when we've done blend testing to try to come up with a new brand, I've had 22 going at the exact same time because it's a tweak of oh, that's each a good one. leaf. Yeah, that was a good question. You do a so, lot of different yeah, yeah. things, huh? That's yeah. very interesting. Love it. We're all in all on right. that. All right, number yeah. nine. I want but a tour. The best place you've ever smoked a cigar. Like the most like unbelievable place you've ever smoked a cigar. It, mine's going to be a little lackluster, but it's literally when I bought my house, I walked in with a lit cigar. Love it. Love it. And that's... That's great. My favorite part about my house is I smoke in it. Well, it, it was the that thing I home? wanted to do was the Hotel Nacional in Havana, Cuba. And I lit a Cuban cigar, and I had one of those Cuban Coke, rum and Coke yeah. and things. Cuba Libra. And I, yep. Yeah. And I, was, yeah. I was unfortunately by I myself, but I sucked it in, Oops, and I said, okay, this is it. Yeah. Talking to myself, sitting there by myself. Uh, but it was something I had planned. He smoked Some cigars by himself a lot. Yes. Yeah. He's a very lonely man. <laughs> I love him. Well, mine was No, depressing. he's relaxed Mine and was calm. in the, the North Shore of Oahu, and we're going to oh, do that my. again soon. That was awesome. Nice. I was yeah. looking, at, looking at the Pacific, looking at volcanoes, looking at mountains. and they, Mine are they, here in my backyard. Cigars? <laughs> <laughs> the two times she's ever smoked yeah. cigars. And, Good and, job, Jim. Or in high school. Grad, Tijuana yeah. Smalls. I smoked yeah. in high school. There you go. Yeah. They can, Linda take an, <laughs> they can take an ordinary experience and make it extraordinary. Absolutely. Or you can take an unbelievable thing that you're at, that you are in Hawaii and look at how beautiful yeah. this is, and just add to it the cherry on the top. Yep. I, I would. It. I would say mine's the same. It's a, it's the it's my balcony at yep. home at the end of the day. It's a little Zen moment for you. Yeah. Me yep. and Murphy, a cigar and a cocktail. All right. This wasn't yeah, a very rapid. This wasn't a very rapid thing. Yeah. I mean, what are you we gonna were do? Just spraying the ball all like over the place. But <laughs> my little ticking. Here's our last question for you. The, and right. It's a golf one. Who won this year's U.S. Open? <laughs> <laughs> so you're hot. Uh, is quick, it his first quick, name Justin? Quick story. No. Me and Jonathan. <laughs> I take him to the, to a baseball game. My first and only and Red Sox game. And we're oh, no. in the in the box with all the food and drinks and everything because some. But he gave us these tickets to end up doing it. And we're there all day long and stuff and drinking and talking to the people and stuff. And I walk over to him. It's probably the seventh inning or something. And I said, Jonathan, here's $100. Tell me what the score is. And he said, I have no idea. He but here's $100 know. if yeah. you could tell me what the score is. And he had no idea. No idea. <laughs> we were socializing great. and not paying attention to anything. So you is it Justin, uh, yeah. right Justin what's his face? Justin, no. Justin Thomas. Is his first name Justin? No. Oh. Yeah. Is it Carl? Kudos, Justin Thomas. Though. Does it start with a C? No. He's no. Spanish. His name is John Rahm. 
no idea. Yeah. I got nothing. Mm. <laughs> well, thank you. This is the guys so to much. have on the golf nothing. thing. Thank oh you so God, much for playing. playing. That, was, uh, <laughs> that was very long. It was a lot. Oh, yes. We'll nice give so I could, yeah, I, I, could tell you the, I could tell you the yeah. weirdest thing I've ever done for golf. Okay. So, uh, I love it. About two weeks ago, I was on quarantine because I had contracted the coronavirus. And I'm outside practicing my pitching into a basket. And the lawn was too I just mowed the lawn. So I was out of stuff to do. I'm pitching into a basket. And I can't get the the wedge underneath because the, the grass is too long. I mowed the lawn a second time down to almost nothing so that I could just practice pitching because there was nothing else to do. I love it. Oh, That's boy. great. So those are fine COVID moments when you're stuck inside. So exactly. normally on the show, we, we don't last this long, but it's hard not to talk for a we long time. We could go all day, but we, we could do go have all to day, be But we do have to get going. And One I wanted to thank shows. you guys so yeah, much. Yeah, thanks. Oh, my have pleasure. A, I we do know our how to smoke show. a cigar now, so I'm yeah. very happy. We're going to do our quote of the week, and it's a golf quote, and it's a cigar quote. I, I looked long and hard for this one, but one of my favorite European golfers, Miguel Angel Jimenez, who a few you would guys would recognize him. He's an older golfer. He has a ponytail, and he always has a cigar in his mouth. And he's giving us this week's quote, which is brought to you by me, Craig Dufton at EXP Realty. Call me if you need to sell your house because it's the best time to treat sell. Treat you like family. Yep. We'll treat you like even better than Scott's roofing. Which means though. he's going to hit you on the, <laughs> he's gonna hit you on the back of the head. Is that yep, the thing? And tell you you're doing something. Slap you guys around and Good say, what are you doing? That. Why haven't you bought this house How yet? do they get there a hold you of you? Uh, you there can you get go. a hold of me at 978-815-7574. And it is a great time to sell. And then EXP Realty, if you're an agent and you want to come join us with a great real estate company, Come join me here. Never seen him happier. Yep. All right. So here's Miguel Angel Jimenez. He says, I am here with the sun shining. I'm surrounded by friends and family. Tonight I will eat good food, drink good wine, smoke a good cigar, and make love to my beautiful wife. It's a good life, no? Yes. <laughs> yes. That's what we do here. Excellent. See? Loved it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So See? thank you all, Dave <laughs> Garofalo from Two Guys and Mr. Jonathan. Great also cigar. Also from two guys. Good. Come I'm down hooked. here and join him on 12 to 2. Why don't you say it? Plug yeah, it one more cigar time. Cigar Authority uh, every Saturday from noon to 2. Uh, we stream live on YouTube and Facebook Live, and we're available on every single podcast catcher. Uh, exactly how you're listening to this show right now. You could just uh, check out The, the Cigar Authority. I was going to tell you that that's we're the same way there. you can catch us on Facebook, and we love you guys as always, and may your... Say it, Jen. Come on. I don't have my glasses on. May your swing on. be straight and your ball fly far. May your string. <laughs> <laughs> She's oh, drunk boy. on the cigar. She's been yeah. drinking. Damn. It's, it's <laughs> the cigar. It's gone She's to her drunk head. On the cigar. I'm going to yeah. say is have a great day. Yes, have a great day. <laughs> May your round be blessed with no worse than par. There it is. That's have why you love we'll me. We'll see you next week. Thank you all Bye. so much. The views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates.